Hello, Keith Ruck here at VengeMachinery.org. Well, back on the LeBlanc restoration, and it is time to put the tailstock back together and get it back onto the machine. So again, I disassembled this off camera. Uh, things were just kind of in a crunch around here with the shop progress going on and needed to get done. Uh, you guys can see how it goes back together. So in reverse, if you've got one you want to take apart, you should be able to figure out how to take this apart uh, from the video. Uh, but anyway, goal today is let's get this reassembled back on the machine and we'll be that much closer to having the LeBlond uh, back up and running. So I've got things stripped down pretty much to just the bare castings. And again, we did clean these up. Um, it was done again with citrus strip primarily. We wrapped these, put citrus strip on them, wrapped them up, let them sit for a day or two. And uh, the old paint and grease and grime and everything came right off with just a little wire brush. Uh, a little bit of elbow grease, cleaned them up into parts cleaner, and uh, you know they were pretty much ready to paint. Took them out, taped things up, painted them. Uh, same process we've used on other parts uh, that you guys have seen before. Uh, and you know this is the final product here. We've got some nice painted castings that are ready to go back together. So this, of course, is the, the main part of the casting up here, where the uh, uh, the the part that goes in and out is in. There's a crank back here that you move it in and out. And that sits on top of this piece here. And this base, of course, it has ways in the bottom uh, that ride on the, the, the machine. This is what slides back and forth. And this is for a reason. And the reason is, is that you want to be able to have some adjustment to adjust the tailstock uh, left and right, uh, get things perfectly aligned. Uh, and you can also use it as a feature to turn tapers if you wanted to. You can actually purposely move the tailstock out of alignment uh, to, to get a taper that you can turn between centers. So there's uh, adjustments in here. You know, that you, basically this part sits on top of this part. There is a little uh, key here that this can slide back and forth on. It keeps it aligned uh, perpendicular. Uh, there's a, a boss in here that has a thread in it and this uh, bolt will basically go through here and by tightening and adjusting this uh, you can move basically move the tailstock back and forth across this so we're going to go ahead and reassemble this first get this back together uh, again the first thing i want to do is get some uh, oil on this because we want to make sure we have some uh, oil between these layers uh, so things can slide around real easily so i'm just going to lube it up really well and I think I'm just going to take my hands here and just kind of rub that in and I'm not worried about using too much oil on this let me grab a towel to wipe my hand okay and with that we'll pick up the heavy casting here I think I can Well, as you probably just heard, my wonderful microphone uh, developed a short in it, and I have no more audio for the rest of this video, so I'm going to be doing some voiceover narration, but uh, basically you're just seeing me put the uh, top casting on top of the base here uh, and getting it ready to go together. Next thing here is we are putting the uh, rod in that uh, will thread through that little boss in the middle. And basically, you tighten and loosen this up, and it will slide the whole uh, top casting from left to right. If you look on the back back here of the tailstock, there's this little machined area, and it has a scale in there. It's literally a scale. It's a marked zero in the middle, and you got one inch, and you got increments on either side. And what this is for is so you to see you to actually adjust this and be able to see your measurements as you're moving the tailstock from left to right and you can use this as a way to actually turn tapers uh, if you want to or uh, you can use it to correct for any error uh, in your uh, alignment and by just turning the the, the the screw on one side you can see it's actually moving the tailstock over and you can see how far it's moving on that scale on the back and once you get it where you want you just tighten up the nut on the other side and lock it all in place with this back together, now we're ready to start uh, getting things a little bit assembled here. And first thing we're going to do is, is get the crank kind of put in here. And you see you got two holes here, and the one on the left is is actually for the 
crank to fit into the handle that turns and that is attached to this uh, worm gear down here. Uh, if you notice the worm gear is made out of brass or bronze. It's a soft material and uh, the purpose for that is, is that that's going to actually engage into the rack down here on the bottom of the spindle that goes in the, you know the, the you put your drills in or whatever and the idea is is that with the that being brass or bronze it's a softer material and that will wear uh, and instead of the actual spindle wearing and if it did wear out you could order a new one from LeBlond and uh, replace it. Mine's in pretty good shape. On the end down here there's also a thrust bearing and that will kind of help things uh, turn freely in there. Uh, you got this sleeve here that holds everything together. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do I think is just coat this thing down with a good coat of oil. Uh, we always want to make sure things are lubricated well and now's a really good time to do it. There is means to lubricate this on the machine but uh, I, I like to just make sure we're starting out good. So in fact there's a little hole right there. I'm just pointing to the place you put the oil in and that drips down through there and it keeps everything lubricated. So with it lubricated I'll go ahead now and we will actually take the shaft and put into the, the little holder here. It's a really nice tight fit and uh, once it gets in there you know with some lubrication it's turning real well. And again you got that thrust bearing on the end and the handle uh, will just snug up on there and kind of hold everything into place. So uh, with that we're getting ready now to put it, this whole assembly up into the the casting and again I'm uh, oiling it down just making sure we got a lot of you know plenty of good oil on here so that everything's lubricated. This doesn't actually turn but having it lubricated will make sure it doesn't freeze up inside the machine. Uh, just to give some protection, make sure you don't have any rust or corrosion in there. And with that, we're now ready to go ahead and put all this back together. So uh, it's ready to go in. Uh, if you notice there's a little bevel down here on the end. That's just gives some clearance for uh, the spindle that goes in. Uh, also, note we got the oil hole here, and the oil will drip down. There's actually a hole in that little sleeve. You want to make sure you get those lined up. It's real important that that oil hole goes all the way down through there. So we're going to slide this in now. Again, making sure we have the, the oil hole lined up and we'll get our screw holes lined up and everything should be nice in alignment. And with that, we'll go ahead and take the screws and uh, put the screws in and tighten things up. With those screws all put in now, we're ready to go ahead and put the handle on. And first thing we're going to do, there's a little Woodruff key that goes in here. Uh, that indexes onto the handle and the handle will just slide up on here. Uh, it is a little bit of a tight fit. Uh, we're going to just kind of tap it in there, get it started and uh, it's not wanting to slide up on real well so I'm going to actually use my soft blow hammer. Um, this is should protect it pretty well and just get it on there enough to get some thread showing where we can uh, tighten it on the rest of the way with the bolt so we'll get that tapped into place and I get ready to go on. Got you zoomed in here now where you can see things a little bit better and, and what we're going to do is use a castle nut and this is a special nut that actually has a little retainer that goes behind it and it keeps that nut from being able to spin off so I got the retainer here and there's actually a key on it. You put it on first and then you take your castle nut and tighten up onto that and uh, what you do is once you get it tight and adjusted like you want to, you will then take one of those little uh, tabs on that little piece that went on first and bend it down into the slot of the castle and uh, that will hold it in place. So now uh, I'm going to use a little trick here. I didn't have a socket to fit on this. It was a little bit bigger than what I had. So I'm just going to use those little pieces in the castle nut to actually use a screwdriver and just kind of tighten that on there. Improvising, but hey, it works. Uh, and once we get this thing nice and tight on there, uh, loose, snugged in there like I want, where there's really not any end-to-end pl -end play or very little play, I'm going to find that piece of that retainer that matches one of those slots in the castle. And they're made to offset where they'll, one will fit and we'll bend that in place. And if you notice now, we've got very little end-to-end -end, uh, play in this. It's real nice and tight uh, and very smooth. 
So we're ready now to put the spindle back into the machine. Uh, of course, this is the part that has the Morse taper on the end that you can put a drill chuck in or uh, taper shank drill bits, whatever Morse taper uh, fixture you have. Uh, before we do, again, uh, use plenty of oil. Take advantage of having it apart. Uh, get some lubrication up in there. Uh, you know, this thing has bearing points on both the front and the back of that casting. The center part's kind of opened up. Uh, that's where the gear is. But uh, this way, it, it really kind of puts pressure on just the front and back side of that shaft as it goes in there. And what I'm showing there is that's where the bolts go down through the bracket in the bottom that will actually tighten it down onto the ways. Uh, and now, <clears throat> I believe we're about ready to go ahead and put this in. So, again, more oil. Go up and down that really good. Uh, I'm going to wipe it on there with my hands, smear it around, make sure we got a good, nice, thin coat of oil all the way around that. And then on that little rack on the bottom that the worm gear engages into, we're going to make sure we get plenty of oil in there as well. Can't have too much oil, guys. So uh, <clears throat> wipe my hands here, and we'll pick this thing up and slide it in. Now, there is a key inside of this. We have to line that key and the key way up. And when we do, uh, it will just slide right back. It went in just a little way and stopped. And that's when the uh, worm gear uh, hit the back. So now we're just going to start spinning that, get those uh, two gears meshed up, and now uh, it just winds right in uh, with the hand wheel, which is exactly what we want, exactly the kind of action we're wanting. And just wiping up some excess oil that came out of the back there and uh, off the front as well. Uh, so anyway, that the spindle is now in. Uh, the other thing I want to point out here is, you know, we mentioned that oil hole a minute ago, and uh, we want to go ahead and, and lube this thing up again real well. So there is a little piece of felt down the bottom that kind of serves as a wick, but we'll fill that reservoir up, and then there's a cap that goes on top, and uh, we'll screw that in place to get everything in holding in place. So now I'm going to put this little handle on the front, and this is just a clamp handle. It screws down this little post, and if you notice, there's a little slot on the back there. And when you tighten this handle down, it basically clamps uh, the, the, the spindle into place and locks it into place. Uh, so by tightening and loosening that, it's just a, a lock for the spindle. Well, we're ready to put this back on the machine now. I've got some rigging here. got my engine hoist out and some uh, slings. Uh, to help me with the heavy lifting and what you're seeing me do right now is there's there's a clamping piece that kind of goes up under the bottom of this that just uh, sandwiches between that the casting that slides on the ways and then the other one goes up underneath the ways and when you tighten the bolts up that's what locks it down in place and so you see me here I've got the second rod I'm pushing it up through there right now and uh, you're seeing it stick out of the top there's a little uh, washer uh, that goes on there and then a nut. And, uh, of course, when you tighten that up, it sandwiches those together and locks them into place. Ready to put this on. I got things kind of lined up here, and we're just fiddling with it, getting that top and bottom piece in line with one another. Uh, it's being a little bit aggravating, but there we go. It looks like it's going to slide on now. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get it everything just exactly like it needs to be. And then I'm going to reach over here to my engine hoist to uh, take the pressure off of it, get those slings off uh, so that we can kind of test it out here. Uh, still dropping down. Let me tighten that up a little bit more. There we go. All right. So let's push the uh, engine hoist, get it out of the way. And now you can see, uh, when I get back over here, we're going to push that, and it's just going to slide right down the deck, just like you want. So I got my handle up here on the top. This is my wrench that we use to tighten and, and loosen those bolts so that you can slide it back and forth. We got it loosened up now, and as you see, everything's sliding real nice. And then you just put a little crank on that, tighten up the back, uh, put it on the front, tighten up the front, and now that tailstock is nice and locked into place, uh, and it's not budging, so it's just like what we want. And the handle looks good; everything's working great. So there's a nice uh, close-up shot. You can see what the tailstock looks like all installed, 
everything looks really really nice and uh, with that you know we're pretty much done here guys uh, we got everything uh, put back together everything looks good on the tail stock I apologize for having to do the voiceover uh, you know we, we made best job we could uh, with with what we had here and hopefully uh, this will turn out all right for you guys but with that uh, we're pretty much done with the tail stock we're gonna move on to finishing up the rest of the lathe hopefully soon and uh, that'll be a wrap we'll talk to you later thanks for watching